Looks like we're live. Hello, everyone, <clears throat> and welcome to yet another recreation and programming session with the Mr. Zozin, <clears throat> who's dying. Let's make a little bit of an announcement and officially start the stream. As usual, uh, live on Twitch. And what are we doing today on Twitch at television website? Today we're doing content aware resizing in C. How about that? So I'm going to give the link to where we're doing all that, uh, twitch.tv slash Zozin. Uh, let me properly spell it twitch.tv slash toting and I'm going to ping everyone who's interested in being pinged and the go the stream has officially started the stream has officially started I really apologize for being a little bit sleepy right now because my sleeping schedule is fucked up again so it is what it is and it isn't what it isn't so um, yeah so several people over some time posted this interesting thing in our discord server which is called sim carving and this is a really interesting idea so essentially it's a, re a content aware resizing right so you probably heard about it you probably even seen it so um i suppose it was probably implemented in some uh in some graphic applications and stuff like that so this is sort of like a test image and the idea is to resize it to make it narrower without distorting neither the building nor the person in here right so and essentially th this is a pretty straightforward algorithm that allows you to do that right so and the result of this algorithm when you make it narrower looks like this and it's out absolutely automatic right so no human is involved in here so it's just like an algorithm that just does that somehow right so this is rather interesting and it apparently there's nothing fancy about it so, so there's no ai involved or anything in fact it's from 2005 right it is from 2005 so yeah it's so freaking simple it is so freaking simple um so and uh i looked up the paper right so you can even find the paper in here right so all of that is going to be in the description obviously if you're watching on youtube um so there this is the paper and there's also supplementary video uh, about how the algorithm works and i really recommend to watch it right so the reason why i even started to uh to stream this entire idea is because i watched this video and explained really well how this algorithm works and that what inspired me to even start streaming this entire thing uh so i really recommend to check it out it's going to be in the description and also another thing that was posted in our discord server uh, which is a visualization of how this algorithm works, right? So it basically, it, it does what it says in the name, it cars the seams, right? It literally cars the seams. So I, I suppose it was implemented by Adam, uh, right? So it's their implementation and this is how it works. As you can see, there is like the seams that are sort of aware of the kid and they're trying to avoid that and they're inserting new pixels where it, doesn't really matter so they're still disturbing some things but they're not disturbing the important things right so and again this is absolutely automatic no human input was provided it is just automatically does that so it was not your implementation it was stolen from github i see i see uh, but in any case uh, right so it's doing all of that automatically so you can provide human input you can implement the algorithm where you can provide the human input but you don't have to you literally don't have to that's, that's what's cool about it right it's content aware and it's like automatic um so mm. Uh, so there is a couple of things in here they don't really matter and essentially the idea is the following the idea is the following you need to compute an energy function on an image that's what you need you need to compute an er energy function and the energy function is going to be what determines the seams that you're reducing or expanding so you, your goal is to find the seams that go across like vertically or horizontally Right, so, but usually vertically, right? So if we want to make a thing narrower, we probably want to uh, remove the, uh, the vertical seams. And those seams, basically the sum of the energy along that seam is the smallest, right? So, and uh, interestingly enough, like what can you use as an energy function? So usually you can use whatever you want, honestly, even the user input 
Right, so th this is where the user input can come in, but you don't have to. So one of the pe uh, things that people use quite often is a gradient magnitude, which is basically a gradient of the brightness of the pixel, right? And uh, that is an energy function. So, and that is actually a very cool energy function because like the uh, gradient magnitude is essentially like a Sobel filter, like Sobel operator, uh, which is used to detect the edges of the image, right? So that means um, the things that are energy dense are the ones that have a lot of edges, which makes a lot of sense, right? So it's it's the thing that have a lot of edges. And uh, because they have a lot of edges, a seam going across such an energy dense um, object is going to uh, contain the, the sum of the pixels are going to contain a lot of energy. So because of that, the, the sim will try to avoid these energy-dense objects and will go around them. And that's how it becomes aware of the content. That's how it becomes aware of the content. It's such a cool idea. Like, it's, it's also so simple, right? All of that, like, makes sense, right? So, yeah, so you, you have objects that have a lot of edges, right? You assign an energy function to that, and you make seams that avoid, specifically avoid this entire thing. And it's just like, yeah, it makes perfect sense, right? So, and that's precisely what I wanted to code today. So, the, the only problem is that how you find these seams, right? So, you have, a, a like, an energy function. You have, basically, association of energy with each individual pixel. How can you find the smallest sort of path from top to bottom where the sum is the smallest, right? Because uh, you have, like, a exponential amount of, amount of uh, sums in there, right? So... One of the ways you can do that, so one of the ways the uh, the Wikipedia page suggests, and also the paper, the original paper, is the dynamic programming, right? So dynamic programming is basically scan from left to right, top bottom, and you look at the neighboring pixels and you just pick the uh, the square mean. So what do they use? Each square represent? I don't really know. Like what's the what's the usual path? Uh, what's the usual function they use to actually combine the the energies of the pixels? Is that a sum or is that a, like a mean? Or is that a minimum or something like that? I don't quite remember, honestly. Uh, calculate the weight density of each pixel, right? So from uh, energy, make a list of seams. Seams are ranked by energy with low energy seams being least important. Uh, they don't really say it in here. Computing the seams. Uh, yeah. But in any case, in any case, so we'll figure it out, I think. Uh, we'll figure it out. So uh, today, this is what I want you to try to implement, right? So I try to implement like a content-aware resizing of the images. Um, right. So that's the plan for today. That's the plan for today. Uh, all right. So let's go ahead and just like do that. Uh, so let me see. Sim carving. All right. Let's do sim carving and let's create a main.cn as usual. Uh, let's create a simple hello world. Uh, so this is going to be hello world. One of the important things that we'll probably need to have in here is an ability to load and save images. So I suppose uh, I'll need to bring the STB libraries. I'm going to steal them from the Musualizer. Um, all right, so let me take a look at the Rayleap, Rayleap 05. And in Rayleap, we do have them in here, resize 2, STB image resize 2, not the first one. Huh. Very interesting. Never heard about the second one. The, the, resize, the first resize was so good, they made the second one, surprisingly. So a, another thing, maybe it makes sense to bring the like knob uh, in here. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so where knob is located, I think knob is located somewhere here. Knob.h, boom. There we go. There we go. There we go. So uh, let's go ahead and just create knob.c, uh, which is going to build the original thing in here. So, might as well just like go ahead and include this thing. And we're gonna have an input in here, which is also accepts the arguments and stuff like that. Right. Uh, nob, go rebuild yourself technology, right? So I need to open it so I can auto complete things in here. I'm gonna provide this stuff. And there you go. There you go. I'm not sure if it's really necessary to do it like that, right? So, because the program is gonna be super small. Mm -mm. 
so uh, yeah, let's see, let's see. CMD is, is actually knob uh, CMD, CMD, it's gonna be like that. Uh, knob CMD append, uh, and what we're appending in here, so we're gonna be using CC. Uh, I want to include a bunch of flags, right? So for extra protection and stuff like that. So it probably also makes sense to include the debug information as usual, uh, right? In case I want to debug this entire thing. And in here, I'm going to output main. Uh, and as an input, we're going to have main. I have not decided like what exactly I'm going to use as the, uh, as the name in here, but yeah. So one of the thing I'm 100% going to link with is math. Um, I'm not sure if we're gonna have any GUI, right? So if I were to add GUIs, I suppose I'm gonna be using Raylib, but I don't feel like doing it right now. But it will be kind of cool to maybe have some GUI to interactively resize with content-aware stuff. Um, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Anyways, uh, so knob uh, cmd run synchronously. We're running this entire thing synchronously, and if it failed, we just exit with non-zero exit code, and that's about it. So uh, let me now build this entire thing, knob, knob.c, uh, right, so we got that, and something is not working, this is because I did not include the uh, knob implementation, right, so knob implementation, there we go, so let me try to rebuild this entire thing, and that should be working, that should be twerking mine, and it is in fact working, it is in fact twerking, so if I run this entire thing, it says hello world. Okay, so let's just grab some image, right? So let's grab this one. I think it's a good idea. And maybe load it up. Um, so I'm going to just like go ahead and download this and that thing. So JPEG. So do we, can we even load JPEG? I think we should be able to load JPEG. So do you support JPEG? Yeah, it does in fact support JPEG. So STBI uh, load, right? So that's the things we need in here. Not the things we deserve, but definitely the things that we need. Uh, right, so let's go. So this is the this is how we're going to be loading things. Um, so I would like to maybe rename this to width and height. Uh, I don't really care about the components specifically because of that. I'm not going to define n. I want to put null uh, as n in here, but I'm going to also say that convert it to four components, right? So because it's going to be easier for me to to work with if I just have four components because it's 32 bits. Uh, right, so and in here we have just pixels, and I would like to treat the pixels as just like you in such a two, right? So you in such a two, there we go. So we got the pixels, and if that didn't work, so for instance, pixels is equal to null, uh, that means we could not load that specific file, all right? So it's called file path, uh, const char file path, and let's take this thing like so. So this is the file path we're dealing with. Uh, fprintf std error uh, right error could not read uh, we're gonna put s in here right so it's gonna be file path let's go and we're gonna return uh, this kind of thing okay cool so we managed to load the image and let's actually print some info about that uh, so we're gonna say file path is this which is in fact file path and then we're gonna have width uh, which is gonna be just the width of this thing and then we're going to have height, which is the height of this entire thing. All right, so let me try to rebuild this entire stuff. It does not rebuild because we didn't include stb image, right? So it's going to be stb uh, image.h. And so let me let me see. So there's also should be an implementation for this entire thing. So let's put it in here. And there we go, it seems to be working, right? So it just complains about unused pixels, but that's fine, that's totally fine. Now we should be able to run this entire thing and it successfully loaded this entire image, uh, 1428 by 968, right? So that is actually perfect, we managed to load the image. So that's pretty cool, that's pretty cool, that's pretty cool. So the next thing we need to do, we need to apply the Sobel operator on this entire thing. Uh, all right, so let me actually take a look at this entire stuff. So I had, um, yeah, the, the Sobel operator, this one. So it should allow us to detect the edges of the image, right? So essentially you have this kind of image, right? So valve original, so this is the original valve. 
Uh, and this is after application of the sub liberator. So as you can see, it allows you to detect edges and stuff like that. And that's what we're going to be using as the energy function. Uh, right. So because the objects with a lot of edges, they are coherent objects that contain details that we don't want to lose. Right. We can treat edges as the details. So that's actually a cool idea. So this energy function like shows the concentration of details and force when we build the seams and stuff like that to avoid the clusters of details because we don't want to lose them. It's actually a very interesting way to look at it, honestly. It's actually a very cool way to look at it. Um, so yeah, and all of that is just like in 2005 before AI or anything like that. It's just like, it's quite bizarre how simple algorithm can be like as powerful as AI, to be fair uh right so um slate 29 thank you so much for tier one thank you thank you thank you all right so uh let's continue uh now what do we have in here what do we have in here uh so we probably need to convert that to brightness because as far as i can tell i never actually implemented the sub operator even though it's it's pretty simple right it it's basically a convolution right and you have two kernels for the convolution uh right and essentially you have the horizontal and vertical uh kernel for the convolution and then what you do you just take a square uh square root of their you know squares some squares square root of the sum of squares <laughs> but basically the distance if you treat it as a vector you, you basically take a distance and as far as i know sub operator is basically an approximation of gradient all right and to be fair specifically for the image we didn't really need this kind of thing all right we, we could just like compute the um you know the delta of the brightness directly and get like roughly the same thing uh, but this thing is probably basically doing the same right it is probably doing basically the same anyways uh so we need to convert this entire thing to a brightness and uh, i was looking through like how do you convert to brightness and i googled up some some things in here right so there was a formula that takes rgb Right, it takes RGB and converts it to brightness. So something like that, luminance. Uh, right, so we could use luminance. Um, so perceived option two, slower. But yeah, it, it converts basically to perceived because it's used a square root, a square root and stuff like that. Um, for certain color spaces, maybe this is what we want to use because this one is actually super easy um, to implement. But anyway... So what we want to do is maybe allocate some stuff, right? Because uh, it's going to be probably floats. Those things are going to be probably floats. So let's go ahead and do that. And I don't really know what they use in R in here. Do they use the value from 0 to 155 or from 0 to 1? Probably from 0 to 1. Like I'm pretty sure it's from 0 to 1 um all right so it's sort of like normalized values we'll, we'll see we'll see right so i want to basically allocate uh something like this all right so it's going to be malloc uh size of floats uh maybe even the size of brightness uh right but dereferenced right we're going to multiply it by width and height so there we go so now we have this kind of thing so afterwards we probably want to um just go ahead and convert each individual pixel into the brightness so we can even have maybe some sort of a function uh which is basically rgb to brightness uh right and then here we're gonna accept the rgb which is this thing uh and uh, then we'll have to basically extract the um, the components right so as far as I can tell, all of that is LSB, right? So all of that is LSB, which means uh, I don't remember in which order we're talking about that. So yeah, essentially R is probably going to be just this. So this is going to be our R, uh, like so. Then G is going to be basically like this right 
and B is gonna be 16. We can even think about this stuff as zero in here, right, for the symmetry and stuff like that. And because of that, we can even think about it like so, right? So it's multiplied by one and this is multiplied by two, right? So for the sake of symmetry, I think I like, I really like to define these things like that. Um, okay, cool. So this is the values, but these are the values from zero to 155. And I suppose this formula that converts RGB to brightness is using normalized RGBs. So probably you'll have to normalize them somehow. So let's go ahead and try to do that. Uh, what I want to do, I think, is to probably just go ahead and divide them by 255 and that will automatically convert it to floats and there we go, we have RG in B in floats. So that essentially should allow us to directly use this formula uh, like this, right. I didn't copy paste it properly, and there we go. So now we have this function that accepts RGB, right? So we just extract in the components of RGB, and then we're converting them to, to brightness or lumin luminance. Uh, maybe I should actually call this thing luminance. Uh, let's call it lum, RGB to lum. Uh, and here we're gonna call this entire thing luminance as well. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a good idea to use this specific value, but why not? Mm -mm. Um, why not? Why not? People are freaking out about double, but I feel like the compiler will tell me. It doesn't really matter. Uh, yeah, so it actually did in fact matter. Whatever. Who cares? Uh, so, okay, so the thing we want to do in here is probably just convert that. What's funny is that the luminance doesn't really depend on the on the coordinate at all, right? So X and Y of the pixel doesn't really matter in that case. So because of that, we can just go ahead and iterate from zero to width multiplied by height, right? So, and essentially just do uh, luminance I equal to pixels I RGB to luminance. There we go. So that's one of the things we can do in here. Um, so for the debug purpose, it would be nice to actually see this entire thing somehow, right? It would be kind of cool to see. Um, so because of that, I feel like maybe it makes sense to actually do conversion back, right? So essentially take the luminance, right? And turn it into RGB, right? But in that case, it's going to be grayscale, right? So we want to see the grayscale image of this entire thing, uh, right? So how can we even do that? So essentially, we just multiply this entire thing by 255, and we just turn it into this thing, right? So which is going to be just, I don't know, so some, some value. I didn't really know how to call that, uh, right? It's some sort of a value. And we want to turn it into RGB, uh, right? So in that case, we want to actually take the alpha, uh, right? So which is going to be hot coded to 155. Then we're combining it with value, which is shifted by, um, by, by you know, eight multiplied by two, uh, something like that. And uh, right, so just in case I want to just like, you know, properly parenthesize all of that stuff. Right, and then it's going to be zero, and that's about it, actually. So, and here we have some sort of a, like a pixel, right? So this is some sort of a pixel. In fact, we just want to assign these things right away to pixels, uh, right? And we've got the pixels, right? So we just take the color image, we convert it to luminance, and we convert it back into RGB. So then we can try to save that, right? So f to save all of that stuff, we need STB image right, uh, right. Uh, so as to be image right. So let's go ahead and just like write all of that stuff. S T B image right, S T B I. Uh, so we're gonna be writing P and G, right? So that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be writing P and G. So what's gonna be the output? We probably need to have something like a out file path right so some sort of the out file path and we're gonna call it loom png so that's what we're gonna be calling it uh you know what i'm gonna call it loom because i feel like we need to uh actually 
save all of the possible different stages, right? So we need to save all the possible different stages, like the luminance, then the, uh, you know, the sobel operator, so the, the gradient magnitude or whatever the fuck it is, people like to call it different uh, interchangeable names for gatekeeping purposes or something like that, but it doesn't really freaking matter. Uh, all that shit is the same. So this is going to be width and this is going to be the height. So the amount of components is four. Then we provide the pixels and a stride is basically the width, but the width in bytes. So that means we need to multiply this entire thing by the pixels like so. So and I suppose if this thing returns false, we have to say that we didn't manage to save that specific file. So we're going to say std error, uh, right, it's going to be error would not save file as, uh, and we're gonna provide the loom file path. There we go, I'm gonna return this kind of thing. And that's about it, right? So I suppose here I can say, okay, uh, right. So, okay, okay. Okay, let's try to compile this entire shit and see if it's going to even work. STBI uninitialized, what, really? Ah, this is because, okay. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it doesn't ret return void, it returns specifically like pixels. Okay, so let's go ahead and just try to run it. It's taking some time. Uh, it actually took quite a lot of time to, to implement, I'm surprised. Okay, there we go. So that's, that's the luminance. Uh, so that's actually kind of cool. Hmm, I kind of like this, honestly. Right, so the original image looked like this. So this was the original image. So then we took only the luminance, whatever the fuck it is, by using that formula. And the formula was actually kind of so slow, right? Even though we didn't really optimize anything. So if we try to time this entire thing, so how much time it took to, to do this? Two seconds, okay. So what if I like optimize all that stuff? What if I try to optimize like all three? Uh, compiling all of that stuff is going to be a little bit of an ass because uh, we're also going to be optimizing all of these libraries and they're huge ass libraries with thousands of lines of code, sometimes almost 8,000 lines of code. Ima imagine compiling all of that with O3. So it's going to take some time, right? So it's definitely going to take some time. But anyway. So let's see. Let's see what's in. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Okay, good. Come on. See, it's taking some time. We're optimizing. We're crunching the numbers. Let's go. And uh, we're going to try to run this entire thing. And it, yeah. So <laughs> we managed to optimize one and a half of a second. I, I don't think it's worth it, right? So waiting all of that time for, for this kind of optimization. So I'm going to disable that. So at least the compilation is going to be a little bit faster, hopefully. Um, surprisingly, here's an interesting thing. Okay, so if I go to C, uh, and also after this entire stuff, I'm going to do CMD count to clean up this thing. Uh, and then I'm going to just run uh, main like so. Uh, right. So let's see how much time it will take. Yeah, so accumulated time, compilation plus the runtime, compilation plus the runtime, how much time it will take? Four seconds, okay, so I'm going to try to do that one more time. Okay, now if I enable optimizations, the runtime will become faster, but the compilation time will become slower. What is the sum? What is the sum? I think it's longer than four. I think it's longer than four. Yeah, it is definitely longer. Right. If you are constantly recompiling and then running, optimizing is actually slower. So that it's 20 seconds. Oh, shit. <laughs> right. So, and I think this kind of effect sometimes happens um, in JIT compilers. 
Right. Because something like that may happen in PyPy, for instance, right? So have you noticed that in PyPy for a very simple script, it takes too much time to compile that script first and then run it very fast. But I mean, at that point, just the regular Python, C Python is going to be faster, right? It's kind of an interesting effect, right? So just like, uh, sometimes it's worth it, but sometimes it doesn't, right? It depends, it depends, it depends. Anyways, so we got the luminance and uh, stuff like that. So we need to compute the uh, the gradient thing here. So the Sobel operator, the Sobel operator. So we have a basically the convolution kernel. Do you guys know how to uh, like uh, convolve these kind of kernels and stuff like that? You guys know? So essentially you scan the image uh, right, you scan the image with the window 3x3 three three, and you multiply each individual pixel with that window with these coefficients and you sum them up and then uh, the, the final value becomes the value of the pixel here in the middle. So, and you're just basically scanning from left to right. So, scanning from left to right. AI. Okay, so in, in that sense, you can say that this is an AI algorithm, right? So, uh, you may say that essentially the entire content aware, <laughs> you can say that the entire content aware scaling algorithm is just a, you know, handcrafted convolutional neural network. Yes, it's, it's a handcrafted convolutional neural network. Yes, that's what it is. <laughs> Mm -mm. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. Anyways. Mm -mm. Uh, let me, let me see, let me see. Um, so we have a luminance and in here, and here's the interesting thing. So you have a GX and GY. So one is uh, horizontal another one is vertical right so you kind of need both of them actually you kind of need both of them and um, then to compute the final one you will have to do this kind of thing um, I, I suppose we can actually compute them sort of like simultaneously if you know what I mean sort of like simultaneously so let's, let's actually uh, uh, hard code these kernels right so we're going to have a static and uh, those are, I suppose, we're going to treat them as floats. Uh, so how am I going to call them? I'm going to call them GX. And I wonder what's going to be the easiest way for me to work with all of that. So maybe, is it going to be like a, you know, plane array? Or is it going to be like a two-dimensional array, three by three? So wh which one is going to be easier for me to handle? I think this one. Uh, right, so... Mm, Two, two, two. So this is GX uh, one uh, zero minus one. Uh -huh. like something like that. Two zero minus two. So I'm just retyping the weights of the convolutional neural network. That's right. So OpenAI with their cluster of GPUs trained. The, this convolutional neural network and posted them on Wikipedia for us to copy paste. Thank you so much, OpenAI. Uh, so, anyways, um, so they're basically kind of symmetrical, right? So it's the same thing, but just rotated, if I, if I understand correctly, right? So it's just basically the same thing. Maybe we can even specify this entire thing once and just rotate. But to be fair, I don't really want to do that, uh, right? It's kind of, it's kind of dumb. It's be it's better to just you know hard code all of this shit. It's better just hard code all of this shice. Hard code all of this shice. Am I a friend? Transpose, yeah. So it's transpose, more like transposed. Uh, all right. So let me let me see. So we have the luminance in here. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. And uh, here I suppose we're gonna have the um, um, the gradient, right? So we're gonna call it grad uh, grad. So this is artificial intelligence. Holy shit! Right. So we'll do another mouth. 
uh, size. Oh, and by the way, I forgot a very important thing. I forgot to check that this thing is never equal to, to null. I think it's quite important. So let's actually do it like that. Uh, right. Something, something bizarre is going on, hopefully. Hopefully that's not my neighbors being angry at me for speaking the Western spy language in the middle of Russia. Uh, all right, so and in here we're gonna have assert grad not equal to null, and there we go. So how are we gonna be approaching this entire shit? So KGB on their way. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, so yes, so yes. So. so we're gonna start with, I suppose, iterating each individual pixel in here, um, like so. Uh, y uh, and height. So basically, we're gonna be iterating row wise and then column wise, like so. Plus plus y. And uh, there we go. So that's pretty a pogers. That's pretty a pogers. So how are we going to be approaching this entire stuff? So this is going to be very, very interesting because... Mm -mm. So we can maybe start iterating in a sense of like dx, dy from minus one to one, right? And that's kind of roughly three by three. So minus one, zero, one, minus one, zero, one, uh, right? And that's kind of cool, I think. Um, right, because it will enable us, so it will be enable us to do something like uh, x plus dx, right, and in here you have a luminance x plus dx and y plus dy, right, and, and of course it can go up, you know, out of the bounds, but that doesn't matter right now. Um, so what I'm thinking is that maybe we want to have something like we want to rename those things. Let's actually call them center, right? So this is like the center where they are located. So C, C, Y, then C, X, C, X, C, X, right? So that enables us to do something cool, actually. X is going to be equal to C, X plus D, X, and Y is going to be equal to C, Y plus D, Y, right? And so that gives us the coordinate in the luminance, right? So X and Y. But that only makes sense if... Um, you know, X and Y are sort of like um, within the bounds, right? So if they are outside of the bounds, I suppose we can just make them equal to zero, right? So there are different strategies how to handle out of bounds when you can a thing. Uh, so, but in this case, I just want to make this coefficient kind of equal to zero, right? So let's actually create float, and this is going to be sort of the coefficient C. And if X if we are within the boundaries, right? So if we are within the boundaries, so zero is less or equal than x, and x is less than width, and zero uh, less or equal than y, and y less than height. In that case, we just take the luminance, uh, x and y, otherwise we just take the zero. So that's how we're gonna be handling all of that. That's gonna be handling all that. So we have C. So the next thing we need to do, we need to take the convolution thingy, right? So we're taking the convolution thingy. So we need to take um, GX, right? So did I actually call it GX? Yeah, in fact, I called it GX. And uh, we can just use DY, right? So DY and DX, but the problem is that this mother flippers start from minus one. So I suppose one of the things we wanna do, we wanna do plus one on them. So, and that way they're going to be going from 0 to 2, which is precisely what we want. And here we can just do uh, multiply by C. Uh, right, but um, we want to collect all that. So if it's a Sobel operator, right, if it's a Sobel operator, I suppose I can call it S. And we, we have two operators, right? So we're going to have uh, the X1 and the Y1, so, you know, GX and GY. So I suppose what we want to do in here is just to have both of them, CX and CY, something like this. And we're going to be simply adding those things in here. Uh, right, and for the vertical one, we're going to be just adding this thing in here. So yeah. So by the end of this entire stuff, we basically convolved, we basically folded a single pixels, pixel for a single kernel. Uh, and we got CX and CY. Uh, and those CX and CY are basically these values, 
are basically these values that we probably want to do something like cx cx plus cy cy and simply sqr tf and that's the final value of that goddamn gradient believe it or not so cy uh, cx right that's what it is honestly so that's how we convolved how we this is how we apply this sobel operator right if i didn't make any fucky wacky and potential oopsie doopsies so basically 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 mm, sorry so i'm thinking is that i actually want to save both of these things right i want to save both of these things so we have we have luminance and we have the the gradient stuff um so maybe it would make sense to factor out this entire thing into into separate function what do you guys think what do you guys think is that a good idea to factor shit out or should we just like continue shitting out the code without structuring mm -mm. Mm -mm. okay good so slate 29 thank you so much for uh tier one subscription thank you thank you thank you i really appreciate that i ran out of tea i ran out of tea so can grad be bigger than one uh can grad be bigger than one well it is bigger than one always probably i don't know honestly i i, I don't know can it uh, can luminance be bigger than one though that's a good question that is an ironically good question uh, i actually want to maybe figure out um, so analyze uh, mean and max so here i'm going to provide the you know values right so some sort of values um let's call it maybe matrix matrix and uh, this matrix is going to have width and height right and essentially here we can iterate from zero to width multiplied by height uh, and i want to keep track of mean and max so mean is going to be that uh, which is going to be flt max right and max is going to be flt uh right so flt min so and essentially mat i if mat i is less than a man a man becomes mat i uh right and then if this thing is greater than x uh it becomes maximum so and in here what we want to do we want to actually print them so it may be nice to have some sort of a prompt in here uh, prompt so um, prompt uh, s and here we can say min is f max is f like so so this is a prompt uh, min max so that way after i computed luminance i can do something like analyze uh, lum um, Loom width and height, like so. And after I computed grad, I can do the same uh, with the grad and just see what's going on in there. So this is a grad and this is a grad. And this is why I want you to actually factor out this entire thing. So I can basically keep saving, uh, you know, different mattresses that I have in here. Uh, right. Uh, but maybe for now, I, I don't want to save anything. I just want to analyze, uh, analyze all of these things. So let's go ahead and just like run this entire stuff and see how it goes. FLT Max, I think it's located somewhere in float.h. I'm pretty sure about that. So and in here, uh, subscripted value is neither array nor pointer, but it is in fact a pointer. I see what you mean by that. I see. I literally freaking see. Okay, so this has to be multiplied by width and plus x. Uh -huh. And this one is uh -huh, similar thing, multiplied by width. Uh, the fuck is that? Width plus uh, cx. All right, so we'll get, let's rebuild that. And 
Okay, so that is true. Gradient can be actually bigger than four. Surprisingly, it cannot be negative, uh, which is fine, I suppose, which is totally fine. Um, so the question is how exactly we're going to represent that. How exactly we're going to be representing that. We can basically normalize that. Um, using this notation, we can also calculate the gradient direction. Uh, Oh. But we only kind of care about the magnitude, right? So we don't really care about the direction, only the magnitude. All right, all right, all right, all right. Mm -mm. So we can literally just create a function that um, this is called normalize. Uh, normalize. Uh, and it's going to accept this entire thing. It's kind of an interesting thing. So that means I can factor out mean and max uh, operations. Um, yeah, that's a cool idea. So mean and max. So here I accept. Damn, that becomes kind of cool. It almost feels like I'm programming in Python using NumPy or some shit like that. I don't know. Um, so, and in here, we can just factor out this test of, so, and we're probably going to be, you know, accepting this stuff like this, float, min, and max. So here, I'm going to be just doing that. And when I'm accepting this, I'm going to be just doing that. So then, it's super easy for me to just allocate min and max, uh, like so, and just min and max, mat, width, height. Uh, like, I feel like I'm reinventing an end.h. Like, I, I just should just bring uh, an end.h because there is a like, convenient way to work with matrices there. Which <laughs> is kind of funny, isn't it? I think, I think it's kind of funny. Right, so, and in here, I can do this kind of thing. And then after I figured all of that out, uh, right, I can just, I can just do that. Uh, I, uh, like so, divided by uh, well, yeah, so I can basically make it equal to, so I need to basically bring it, yeah, I need to have set it by the minimum, right, so I need to have set it by the minimum, and divide uh, by the max minus min, right, since it's going to be zero, it's going to be fine. So something like that, something like that. And that's how we're going to normalize this gradient, right? So normalize grad width and height, uh, right? Uh -huh. yeah, as you can see, so grad got normalized, grad got normalized. So, and let's actually factor out, um, let's actually factor out this kind of thing, like dump a matrix. Uh, so we're gonna call it char file path, and uh, we're gonna just you know accept this and test it. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is what we've got. This is what we've got. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Damn, who needs Python? I'm telling you, it's just like it is as convenient as Python, honestly. <laughs> Right, a little bit more cucumber some syntax, but overall, it's just like, it's fine. Uh, you can do this kind of stuff in, in C, no problem. Um, okay, so what do we have in here? Uh, we're going to convert it to mat, right? So this is just mat. Uh, and here's just a file path, nothing particularly special. Um, yep, yep, yep. Might as well, honestly, return something like boolean or whatnot. So I can do false in here, then return true, and then print f. So, okay, generated as, and I'm gonna say file path. Uh, so, let me, let me, let me see. Okay, so what do we have in here? Boolean, unknown. Uh, can do this std boolean. So what else do we have in here? So it accepts the pixel. I get them, bro. So you need the intermediate sort of like array of pixels, which is rather interesting because we can kind of, 
Uh, we can kind of allocate it in here, honestly. Uh, you in such a two pixels as a temporary thing. So size of pixels uh, multiplied by width multiplied by height. Of course, it's going to assert uh, pixels equal to null. But there is a little bit of a problem in here. It's because it's a temporary, uh, temporary data. We should not forget to free this entire thing basically at any return. Basically at any return, which means we, maybe we can use the defer pattern. I think we could use the defer pattern in here. So I'm going to basically pre sort of define this entire thing in here. Uh, like so. So this is going to be initially null. And we're also going to have some sort of a like result in here, which is true initially. So then we can have a defer pattern, uh, which frees this entire thing and returns the result. And instead of actual return in here, we want to use a, a nub return defer, and we return false in here. And that automatically just works, and we don't have to do this kind of shit. So this return like short circuits to this defer in here. So that's basically what we have. Yeah, you know, they call it uh, null. There we go. So I'm going to try to do that. Implicit declaration. Oh, this is because I never really included nob. Let's include nob.h. We probably don't even have to include implementations because it's a macro. It's just a macro. And as you can see, everything seems to be working. Everything seems to be twerking. So that's pretty cool. Uh, what if now we try to dump uh, dump matrix, right? So this is going to be grad PNG, grad width, height. And uh, so another thing, we're going to also dump luminance in here, both of them. I think all of that is going to be very much useful. Let's go. Let's go, my dear friend. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, my dear friend. Let's go. Okay, so we got all of these things. So original image was this, right? So the luminance is it's taken some time. Okay, so we read that because it's modified. And uh, most importantly, gradient. Uh, yeah, so we detected the edges. <laughs> so <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> okay, so who needs Python and NumPy and some other shit? You, you can do all of that in, in C. You can do all of this shit and see fucking easy. Uh, so <laughs> it's just like, yeah. And we generated this image with pre-trained convolutional neural network with the hard-coded weights in the source code. This is a small mini convolutional neural network and it helped us to pre-process the image. So that, yeah, so as you can see, this is a small convolutional neural network. Okay, so we've got the energy field, right? We, we've got the energy fields that we can use for the seam carving now. Um, so the only thing we need to do, we need to probably apply this um, dynamic programming algorithm to figure out the shortest path, right? So um, I'm still not sure like, what exactly going to be is the function that is used in there. Uh, they don't really tell us uh, right well, we'll see. We'll figure it out. So I'm already streaming for one hour and I ran out of tea. Uh, so I think the time has come to make a small break and refill the cup of tea. And after refilling the cup of tea, we're going to try to, uh, you know, uh, continue doing this entire thing, specifically dynamic programming, right? So we're going to try to find the shortest path that sums up to the smallest amount of energy, right? So and the energy field is going to be uh, this gradient that we managed to create with the subtle filter right this is actually super cool holy fuck anyways let's make some break um okay so we need to understand how you compute the um, uh the energy for these seams so apparently after discussing with the chat um it, it is just the sum right it is just the sum we, we can take a look at the uh, at the original paper so to speak um, so I didn't look into the paper itself, right? But I watched the video. I watched the video and in the video, uh, so just a second, I'm going to actually mute this entire thing. And I really recommend to watch this video because like it really inspired me to, to do today's stream. Uh, it explains this stuff too freaking well. Uh, so look at that. Look at the explanation. Like look, look how it's going to look like. So holy fuck so th this is what this algorithm is capable of doing 
this is what this algorithm is capable of doing. So it's aware of the content, so to speak. It's so freaking cool. I love it. Um, all right. So and the, the fact that all of that is just like unsupervised, right? So you just give it and it just figures it out itself. That's beautiful. No AI, no any bullshit, just math. But I mean, you, you can argue that AI is also just math, but whatever. It's data driven, right? This is not data driven. Um, so let me let me see. So finding the sim, uh, right? So finding the optimal sim. Arg mean. So I suppose it's just like um, what is the freaking mathematicians using their notations and shit. Um, so. Oh, okay. So if, um, yeah, so if this, uh, what they're doing here is dynamic programming, right? Uh, they are taking a minimum between the previous solutions of the dynamic programming and they added it to the current energy level. So that means it's literally the sum. It is literally the sum. I can, I can see that. So I don't understand this mathematician bullshit, right? But this is a programmer's bullshit. I do understand programmer's bullshit. So I understand this one. So this is literally the sum accumulative. Uh, cost matrix, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, dynamic programming. Uh, so yes, 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 yes. Um, what I'm thinking is that maybe I want to factor out some of these functions in here, right? So essentially, uh, the function that computes the luminance of the of the image, right? So that would be kind of cool. Um, so and this one is going to be maybe returning something like this luminance, uh, right? It's going to be accepting the the pixels, right? So pixels, uh, int width, int height. So I'm going to factor out some stuff that I shitted out in here, <laughs> right? So namely these things, uh, right? So we just pre-allocate uh, this thing by width and height, then we iterate in the pixels. Then we're doing that, and then we just return this entire thing, uh, right? And effectively, luminance uh, is going to be pixels, width, and height. Obviously, all of that leaks the memory, but who freaking cares? We are not doing like a long-running application that needs to run 24/7. It's just it's a batch application. All of the memory that we allocated in here is going to be deallocated by operating system at the end. It doesn't matter. So no need to really free anything. I, I still free some stuff in some of the places, but this is these are like places that potentially can be run in a in a loop, right? So and it's better to actually deallocate some stuff in here. Here at the top level, it doesn't really matter honestly. Um, right, so this is the luminance, and let's introduce something like a gradient. Um, you know what? I'm gonna literally call it a Sobel filter. This is actually kind of cool. So this gives me an opportunity to give like a cool names to this entire shit, right? So it's gonna be mat, uh, width and height. Like imagine you accept in the matrix and you apply in a Sobel filter into it. I think that's pretty freaking cool. Um, right, and here we can just like grab this entire stuff. Uh, right, put it in here and just return the grud uh, like so. And in here, uh, we're gonna just do in uh, sobble filter lum width and height. Yeah, so this is literally the reason why I wanted to factor all of that out because uh, I'm loading an image. I'm computing the luminance of that image, right? So analyzing min and max just to get the idea what the fuck is going on. Then I'm dumping it to, an, to a file so I can inspect it later. Then based on that luminance, I computed gradient of it by applying Sobel filter, which implies that I can have different kind of filters for this kind of stuff, right? I also normalize it in here so then I can sort of dump it in here, which is rather interesting. So can I normalize this stuff inside of the yeah, inside of the dump matrix. This is actually a cool idea. I think normalization has to be applied inside of the dump, dump matrix, so the outside, I don't really care about it. I think it is true. I think it is in fact true. So honestly, um, maybe the way we can do all of that, the, the way we can do all of that is rather interesting. So we are taking the matrix and we need to take its mean and max, right? So we want to take its mean and max 
and we're literally gonna do min and max so mat width height uh, min and max right so and as we work with all of that we can just normalize it like this in here we can just normalize it like this in here uh, which means that we don't really need that normalized, right? So we normalize it in, in place and then multiply it by 255, um, right? So I can just call it something like T, right? So it's a normalized value T and then multiply it by 255, convert the uint and then blah, 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 blah. So because of that, normalize is not really needed by itself, right? So there's no other really application for that function anymore uh right so you don't need that also we may want to take a look at the grad uh grad min, min and max and there we go so we factored all of that out uh so let's go ahead and just try to recompile this entire thing so it's mn what else do we have in here so uh yeah this one is an input, right? So that means here we have to do mat. Uh huh. Okay, that's cool. Mm -hmm. All right. So we factored out all these things successfully. So here is that, uh, and here is that. Okay. So I suppose the time has come to now compute the dynamic programming table right so essentially just like iterate from left to right and just do the dynamic programming thingy um so maybe i should have not closed that specific image uh from the paper right so let's go ahead and just open it up one more time maybe i should have actually screenshotted or something like that uh, da, 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 Mm -mm -mm. so where is the dynamic programming here it is yeah so we're looking at minus one minus one then um minus one j minus one so we're literally looking only, only at these things at these three so okay fair enough Fair enough. So we can think about it as like a two-dimensional convolution. Yeah, it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. Anyway, uh, so it's posed, right? So perfect. Um, we need to allocate more, uh, you know, memory for all of that. So let's do malloc. Give me size of dp, uh, and we're gonna multiply by width and height, uh, and of course, obviously, we want to assert that this thing is not equal to null, uh, right? And we're going to be just iterating row-wise and column-wise and stuff like that. Though I suppose the first um, column, the first column has to be allocated, um, has to be allocated, but basically initialized with the uh, gradient, right? So we can just iterate x uh, and then x then width something like plus plus x uh, we should start with the second row exactly exactly so this is like a classical dynamic programming right so uh, classical dynamic programming um so this is going to be uh, a row is zero but x is going to be equal to grad uh, zero x so we're literally just copying a single row right so we're initializing the single row and um, Effectively, at some point, I would like to also dump this thing as a as an image as well, right? So uh, we'll see how it goes. So maybe it's not going to have uh, negative values. I don't think so, right? Because all, everything is positive, so it's going to be all of that is going to be basically positive. So that means we should be able to use our dump mat functions there as well. It will normalize everything and just like print. Print perfectly. Uh, okay, so we need to start iterating from one. Uh, right, so it's going to be height plus plus y. Uh, right, and what do we have in here? So, um, so we can have actually interesting situations in the sense that uh, we can go out of bounds, 
which is understandable as well. So we can do uh, maybe something like dx. Damn, it like I, as I already said, it feels like a like one dimensional convolution, right? So it does in fact feel like one dimensional convolution, which which is really funny. Um, so we, we want to start with the x in here. Because of that, maybe I should call it cx, uh, cy, cy, and cx, uh, cx zero cx less than width, like so, plus plus cx. Uh, there we go, and. Honestly, C doesn't really have to be Y, if you ask me, it just has to be something like this. X is going to be uh, CX. Mm. So we need to iterate uh, this entire stuff. We need to iterate this entire stuff. So it's gonna be DX minus one, DX equal to one plus plus DX. Uh huh. Afterwards, we're gonna have x, which is cx plus dx, right? And the most interesting part is that you can we can have a value, which is depending on whether we are within like proper x, zero less or equal x, and x is less than width. In that case, we just do um, so the value that we really care about, right? The value that we really care about is dp y minus one specifically uh, x otherwise if we out of bounds for whatever freaking reason is going to be zero right away right and what's interesting is that here we're computing the minimum according to this specific formula right so we're computing the minimum because we're trying to find the minimum path minimum sum uh right so because of that we need to uh, have this kind of thing so this is going to be it's called m so since it's a minimum it has to be flt flt max right so and if uh, value is less than m that means m is the value right so because it's it's less than the minimum so that's what it is all right so that's pretty cool in order that's pretty cool you know mm -hmm. um so now what we have to do we have to apply the dp which is going to be y uh, cx um, equal to grad ycx plus that m that we computed in here and that basically gives us the dp right so and that dp is going to be useful for computing the uh, specific seam that you want to either extend or remove right so that's basically what's going on in here so afterwards we probably want to I, I just want to analyze the uh, min and max just to see how they look like so what's going to be the minimum what's going to be the maximum so it's going to be just dp uh let's go it doesn't even compile freaking uh subscribe oh yeah i freaking remember all of that so it has to be multiplied by width of course because it's a single uh you know one dimensional array that's what it is one dimensional array hope i didn't do any fucky wacky uh all right let's go so what else yeah we also have these shites uh, multiply by width plus x let's go uh are we good are we gucci are we tamaguchi yes we generated some images in chat okay so yeah surprisingly it's maximum is four huh which i mean is understandable sure sure it's probably understandable not really though but um so we were looking at the previous ones yeah it should be fine should be fine it's good. i didn't expect that honestly but okay um, so let's just dump the dp png uh, right so it's gonna be dp oh yeah i see what's going on <laughs> of course of course of course mm -mm. all right so what do we have yeah that's what i'm talking about 81 <laughs> uh, which is not that much honestly it's not that much it's fine 
Uh, let's go ahead and just dump uh, the the image in here, All right? So let's we'll just go ahead and dump the image and just look inside of this entire thing. Mm, just look inside of it. <clears throat> Zero times the width. Yes, this is needed for the symmetry. Uh, the compiler is going to optimize it anyway, so who cares? Not bad. So that's kind of... <laughs> you can kind of see the person in here, for instance. So it's just like a... And the, the, the building and stuff. Right. So that's kind of cool. I really like that. So, and using this DP, we're supposed to compute a seam, right? So we're supposed to compute a seam. So I suppose we're going to start with the bottom, right? So we start with the bottom. We need to find like the minimum, um, you know, the, the minimum sum in there, right? The minimum sum in there. And we need to start working upwards. We start working uh, like working upwards and I suppose just removing the pixels, simply removing the pixels. Uh, right. And I, I suppose we can write a function that just picks the minimum uh, sim, builds a sim and removes it. And we can repeat that function several times and it will effectively shrink the image as much as it can preserving the details of important objects, the objects with the highest amount of energy. And we, we can see that energy in here, right? So to be fair, this is not really the energy, uh, right? So the actual energy is something like this, but I mean, this is just like the, uh, the map that helps us to compute the, uh, the minimum, right? It's the map that helps us to compute the minimum. Mm. Dark spot near the, the, yeah, this is weird, honestly. I have no idea what caused that. It shouldn't be a thing. In all fairness, in all fairness, it shouldn't be a thing. Um, so, yeah, if we take a look at the gradient in here. Huh, I don't really know what it is. Minimums. That's a real cool looking picture. Error in the normalization function, probably. Something with the normalization got fucked up. So dump mat, dump mat. What exactly are we doing in here? So we kind of, we compute this entire thing only like once. Uh, maybe it just gets overflown or no, I didn't think so. Honestly, I didn't think so. <laughs> Mm -mm. Um, maybe it should be minus uh, yeah it should be actually minus thank you thank you so much yeah. so because you have a value is a minimum you subtract it to yeah, yeah okay so that explains it so, so that's probably what it was uh, and so that means the other images were kind of incorrect slightly. Right, so okay, let's take a look at them then. Uh, so luminance uh, is kind of the same, looks, looks kind of the same. A gradient, uh, it's also kind of the same. And now DP. Uh, yeah, now there is no such patch in here. So I guess that patch was the only sort of problem. Uh, okay, sure. The, the thing I want to do now, uh, the thing I want to do, I want to draw the path, so to speak. Uh, right. To draw the path, what I want to do, I want to iterate the x, right? So it's going to be x less than width, um, right? And essentially what I want to do, I want to find the index of the minimum path, the index of the minimum path. How can we do that? Um, so we can start with something, we can actually start with using index um, zero, right? So, and we can just start iterating from one and we can just keep comparing with that. So if 
dp uh, y, actually not y, height minus 1, um, x is less than this thing. We found a new thing, so i becomes x. Right. So afterwards, we can say uh, the minimal seam starts at column, uh, and let's put i in here. Right, because I just really want to see that. So maybe dumping all of that is too much, right? Actually, dumping all of these things takes too much time, but I mean, whatever. Um, let's do that nonetheless. Oh, I keep forgetting. <laughs> right. Maybe I should like write a macro for this entire thing. I think writing the macro would be beneficial, but I mean, it, right now it's going to just take too much time anyway. Uh, uh, right, so did I do that correctly? I think I did it correctly. All right, so luminance, we generated that, we did that, and okay, the minimal seam starts at really, did I do a fucky wacky? That's kind of bizarre that it starts in here. Is that even correct? That is truly sus. That is truly sus. One of the things we can try to do is maybe yeah, I don't know. It's like, oh, but what is the maximum then? So what if I just switch it around? Uh, okay, so what's, what's the maximum? So, all right. Show me what you got. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm, and 136, and if we take a look at the file, uh, what's the... A resolution of this thing. Uh, it's actually uh, 1428, right, and it was like 1300 and something. So yeah, I think it is correct. So I think it's ki it was kind of accidental that it starts from there. Um, so, but that's fine. That's, that's kind of fine, actually. It's kind of fine. Um, so we found that one X. All right, so we can maybe even call it a column instead. So this is more of a column. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we found that one. And afterwards, we can try to move upwards. Uh, so we can even do something like Y. Uh, y, um, so height minus 1, actually height minus 2, y greater or equal than 0, right, so minus minus y, so we're moving upwards, we're moving upwards, and as we move upwards, we are basically repeating whatever we had in this dp, uh, just trying to find all these things, so here is an idea that I have, uh, I'm going to go into the pixels, and in here, I'm going to just literally take this column. I'm going to literally take this column and I'm going to place a red color, a red pixel in there. Right. I'm going to place a red pixel in there. And uh, as I go upwards, I'm going to be keep placing red pixels in there. Right. Um, so, and that way we'll be able to see that sim. So. Uh, what school is that? What school is that? So let me let me see. So imagine that we have an image, right? So that's the image uh, pixels. Uh, that the problem here is that in the memory it's actually flat, so it looks more like this, right? So there is no spaces in there; it's just like a you know flat thing. Uh, what we want to do, we want to be replacing like literal columns, right? We want to be replacing literal columns. But since it's like flat in the memory, it's not that easy to do that. So what I'm thinking is that we're going to be actually leaving a little bit of a space in here. So as we keep removing the seam and it's going to be in random places, right? So it's going to be in random places like so. But the, at the end of the day, you 
gonna have the rows of the same the, the same amount of columns so we can actually use the notion of the stride to remove the pixels we can use the notion of the stride so we can just use the same buffer into which we loaded the image right and as we shrink in the image down we're using the same buffer uh, but we're just increasing the stride so we're decreasing the amount of columns but the stride stays the same that way um, we can just save the shrink down image so i'm just thinking about how uh, like to to manage memory and stuff like that so yeah <clears throat> Okay. Uh, team Epic War, thank you so much for Twitch Prime. So, all right, let's continue drawing this team. Let's continue drawing this team. Um, so, we need to do this iteration with DX and stuff like that. All right, so it's going to be DX. Uh, and what we need to do in here is that we need to pick this thing accordingly. So the, we need to pick the next column. We need to pick the next column. So how can we pick the next column in here? Um, so I'm gonna call it next column, right? So, and the next column could be, honestly, the current column, right? So we can just say, okay, that the current column is the, so the, the next column, right? So it's just like the next best thing anyway um so yeah mm -hmm. and then uh, what do we do we see if like we need to take the dp uh, we take y the current y which is one minus um plus the next column that is not true that is not necessarily true so we need some sort of like um, um so this is an offset this is an offset this is an offset so it's an offset from from the current column plus dx so this is sort of a potential it's a, it's a potential new candidate that's what it is uh right so it's a potential new candidate so if we do x and that thing is for whatever reason um mm, that's pretty cool actually for whatever reason less than column Huh, it's, it's kind of weird, but I mean, it, it may work, honestly. It may actually work. Uh, but, but it has to be only if x is within the boundaries, right? So x, uh, 0 less equal x, less than width. Only then it is like that. Damn, that, that makes too much freaking sense. We can even maybe combine all that stuff. Uh, right, for extra uh golfiness right so it's just like yeah we use the column as the current candidate and we just like pick uh, it's, a, it's a pretty good way to do that honestly it's actually an wrong good way to do that huh and after we just found a new column we simply do it like that right we simply do it like that and uh we can just go ahead and save um that thing so stbi write an image mm -hmm. so we're gonna be writing so file path this is going to be out file path this is also out file path uh right and that out file path is going to be a uh, sim PNG. Right, we're going to be uh, drawing a single sim. Um, hmm. All right, I like what I see. I'm not sure if it's going to work, but we'll see. We'll see. So, what, what do you what do you say? Oh, yeah, this one is just like uh, return one in this case because we don't have a defer. We don't have a defer in here. Mm, okay. So we have we have good Tamaguchi. A boom. I said boom. 
Yeah, boy. Uh, all right. So we generated. Do we generate the sim? Do you see the sim? I don't freaking see the sim. Um. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, that, that's cool. That's already something. Uh, let us see. Oh, I see. I see. I see. I see. That's that makes sense. One more time. One more time. Small stream. Yeah. So we're almost done, I think. I'm pretty sure we're almost done uh, with this uh, this entire thing. If nothing bad happens. Uh. Well, that is funny. I mean, that is a valid way to define that, honestly. Right, who who said that this is not the minimal path, uh, path honestly? Who said that is not the minimal path? M maybe it is. Right, so maybe it freaking is. Um, so another interesting thing would be to maybe actually pick not the smallest column in, uh, in here, but something in the middle, uh, maybe I'm going to even use this super comment, uh, right? So it's going to be else uh, and if. So I'm going to say column is basically half of the width. Let's say that this thing is going to start from like, you know, half of the width. And let's see how that specific sim is going to behave, right? So how is it going to behave? Is it going to behave nice or is it going to be something else? Uh, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, all right, so... Now we're freaking, yes. Now we're freaking talking. Now it looks like a seam. So yeah, I suppose it just, it was the minimal thing. It was the minimal thing in there. So, and the idea basically, the idea basically is to just remove these seams. Just simply remove the seams. I don't know the strategy of removing the seams. Um, how do you remove them? Do you remove the smallest one? Do you constantly recompute them as well? Like every time? I, I think it does make sense to constantly recompute them. Um, so I'm not 100% sure. So what's the strategy on, on removing them? But what's funny is that, what's funny is that we can, um, instead of placing like, um, red pixel in there what we can do we can try to do mem move to remove that pixel like technically like offset an entire thing this is something that we can do in there right but that will also mean that we have to update the gradient right so um, i'm not quite sure do we have to recompute the luminance and gradient and dp and stuff like that do we really have to do all of that stuff <sighs> because kind of yeah i think we, we have to do all of that stuff like every time we remove one thing uh it may change the details yeah recalculate everything yeah so that means um so luminous probably luminous can can stay the same right so because it's kind of independent gradient has to be recomputed dp has to be recomputed um and so we probably don't want to reallocate the memory or anything like that so we need to keep track of this stride mm. I guess each iteration starts a new, like a brand new image, yeah. But I mean, that's a lot of memory reallocation, deallocation and stuff like that, so which might be very expensive and very slow and we're already kind of slow in here. Hmm. Though I feel like uh, the slowness right now comes from dump, uh, dump mat, so we can kind of uh, do something like this. Uh, and if... Um, dump maybe define dump mat like so uh, and let's just try to do it like that so hopefully it will be faster if we don't dump in the images mm -hmm. all right so what if i don't dump this thing as well 
How quickly is it going to go if I just don't do that? Um, so, yeah, that's pretty fast. That's pretty fast. But anyway, 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 anyway. Um, so maybe it makes sense to introduce... Um, to introduce a notion of a matrix notion of a matrix where essentially you also have a stride i think that's a good idea by the way since those things are used only in sobel operator sober operator <laughs> uh, we can put them inside of it right so i think i think that makes sense uh -huh. yeah that, that compiled perfectly so that's cool uh, so the, the thing I want to do, I want to introduce the matrix, right? So which is going to be sort of like a view on a matrix. So it's going to be matrix. Uh, it's kind of similar to what we had in an end of age, right? So it's kind of similar to that. So items uh, is going to be pointer to that. Uh, we're going to have uh, rows, maybe columns like width and height. Let's call it width and height because we already kind of depend on the notions of width and height. And we also have a stride. Uh, stride. Okay, so yeah, um, and afterwards that will enable us quite easily remove, um, you know, certain things, remove the the columns, right? Because that's one of the things we want to be able to do. We want to be able to remove the columns. Uh, <clears throat> So, and we're also keeping track of the stride. So one of the things we probably want to do, we want to be able to alloc the matrix, matrix alloc. Uh, so it's going to be size, width, and height. Honestly, we already use an integer everywhere. So maybe I'm going to continue using integers like so. I think that makes sense. Uh, mat, mat, uh, maybe even something like this, mat items. And the malloc uh, size of float multiplied by width and height. Uh, mat width, width, uh, height, and stride. Something like this, and then we'll return that. So just allocating this kind of thing. Um, so that helps to. to to do all that stuff mm. so then what i'm thinking is that when we compute in the luminance maybe what we have to do is just pre-allocate all of these matrices luminance gradients and dp right so we're just pre-allocating all of them um so let me even maybe do it like that so it's gonna be matrix matrix uh Mat alloc alloc, uh huh. Then like this, and then like this. Cool. And these functions, luminance, they're not going to be returning anything. So they're going to be accepting this stuff. Um, we can even do it like that. So this is going to be just lum, uh, and that is pretty straightforward. Honestly, that is pretty straightforward. Um. So it doesn't even by point, right? So because it's sort of like a slice, uh, right? So we can just do it like that. Um, this one, mm, we can do something like um, just a matrix. So this is the input and the output is going to be a grad. Yeah, and we don't have to even allocate this kind of thing anymore. So this is just that. So the reason why I'm doing it like that is because now I can just do luminance. And when we're analyzing this kind of thing, again, we don't really need that stuff anymore. Yeah. So let's put it this way. And this is a sort of like a major factoring, but this is something that really was really needed. Yeah. So now we are doing that in terms of these sort of things so this is going to be sobel yeah luminance 
uh, grad. Okay, I think that's basically enough. Right, so that's basically enough. Uh, we, we just need to go to the compilation errors now, right? So I think we've collected enough of the things. So yeah, when I'm passing mat, uh, min and max, right, when I'm passing min and max, what I need in here is effectively just the matrix. Right, so, so right now I just need to grind the compilation errors, nothing particularly special. Uh, right, but this one is rather interesting because now we have stride. Now we have stride. So because of that, uh, because of that, so no assert. Yeah, I think I need to put an assert in here. Assert that this thing is not equal to no. So I need to have a macro that allows me to easily access all of that stuff. So define mat at, uh, so it's going to be mat row column, right? And essentially in here, mat items. Uh, then we do row multiplied by mat stride, not width, right? So because width can be smaller than stride, plus uh, the column. And all of that has to be actually uh, wrapped in this kind of thing. Um, right, so let's go back. Uh, so in here, what I need to do, I need to actually iterate y, um, like so less than that plus plus y same goes for x with x and in here now i can move that stuff so it's going to be mat at uh, y x mm -hmm. and to be fair we can just do value so this is the value this is the value the rest of that stuff are values. All right, so we just like read it once, maybe into a register. Uh, right, so this is how the compiler is probably going to optimize it. And then we're just like figuring all of that stuff out, hopefully. Okay, let's go through the rest of the things. Uh, mean and max. So we're passing only that stuff. So we're passing the matrix and we're getting mean and max and we're just like printing all of that stuff. Uh, what else do we have in here? So mean and max it again. Uh, what else? Uh-huh. So pixels when we dump in an image, yeah. So we have to do mat width mat height. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and effectively what we're doing in here. Here we'll also have to do this kind of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's um so a lot of refactoring that I didn't really anticipate, but it's really needed. Otherwise, like I can't properly do the thing that I want to do. Uh, right. So, yeah. Sometimes, like you have to pay off the technical debt, right? So, I was just taking the technical debt as much as I could, but I mean, it hit me like a truck. It literally hit me like a truck, and there's nothing I can do about that. Sad, truly sad. So here is i, y multiplied by mat width, right? And yeah, this is how it's gonna go about that. And it's just plus x. So this is just i. But in here, it's gonna be mat at mat uh, y and x. So do we always do that correctly? Yeah. So, so this is this is fine. Um, so might as well even yeah. So it's already taken. So that's totally fine. Uh, so pixels like a mat, but I mean they do, they are different types. I can't make them mat. Uh, I can't make them mat. I'm gonna close the chat. All right. So what do we have in here? Uh, so what we got? So okay. So this is a matrix. So and I can't easily do that, right? So. It was so easy to take this technical depth with just like iterating as this thing as a flat thing and it's just like fuck me up. Fuck me up big time. Now I have to get rid of all of that. Um, so yeah. freaking So that's what happens in software development. You think you can just quickly do that and then just like no fuck you, refactor everything. Fuck you. <laughs> Uh, okay, so luminance and uh, yes, yeah, so it's gonna be mat at 
uh, yx. Um, this is pixels, and that specific i has to be y multiplied by luminance. What was that like a height? And uh, what's interesting is that they potentially can be desynchronized, like width and height of this thing. So you you kind of have to assume that width is equal to lum width and height is also the same thing in here otherwise it's just gonna have a bad time otherwise you're gonna have a bad time so yeah something like this so we just compute the luminance and stuff like that okay we'll go what else do we have in here uh so we don't have to return anything don't have to return anything so here's sober filter another interesting thing in here also right so their shapes have to be synchronized otherwise again you're gonna have a bad time uh, grad width uh, and also height width and also height uh, what else do we have in here so we are iterating what uh, I suppose mat mat uh -huh. And GD blah 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 mat at and here we have Y and X now uh -huh. and here we have mat CY CX uh -huh. and then we don't even have to return anything because it's an output that's good that's gucci that is in fact my gucci and in here we can just do that can you see scheisse i think you can't really see scheisse but maybe now you can uh all right so analyze blah blah so that's very easy i think we're almost done with the refactoring so subble filter yeah so we don't have to provide these things anymore uh right so we don't have to provide these things anymore uh what else we have to then do that uh -huh. this one is good right so because now we don't have to do this cryptic thing uh so can here we can just do something like that so that makes more sense because i saw people in the chat asking zero multiplied by which so, so weird why do you write it like that so then later i can refactor it like that this is like whoever asked in the chat why did you write zero multiplied by width like that that doesn't make any sense so i did it so now i can do something like this right so i explicitly write it out the intent so almost 20 years of software development that's what it does to you you start to notice these kind of things you start to write a code that doesn't make sense for other people but i mean it encodes the intent so then later i can refactor it like that so now hopefully that answers the question right so that was the reason that literally the reason uh, because i can kind of plan ahead right so i'm planning ahead how i'm going to be refactoring the code um Mm, okay, so this is going to be like this, and just like that. Mm, and yeah. So now we're going to have this kind of thing. All right, so mat at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that gets really, really cool. Uh, so analyze we don't have to pass that stuff anymore hopefully i didn't break anything hopefully i didn't break that I, I could actually break something it feels like i might break something at some point but we'll see we'll see probably we'll have to debug some of this stuff uh right because this is c like i can never expect anything working in here Didn't even sick fold, by the way. Didn't even sick fold. All right, let's take a look at the luminance. Uh, does it look correct? <laughs> oh, uh, gradient. Uh, yep. yep, yep, yep. Very cool. So I suppose they all kind of fucked up in the same, like, similar way. 
let's see what exactly is wrong in here. Uh, so mat with um, yeah, that is kind of bizarre, honestly. That is kind of bizarre. So we can just start by scaling down to luminance, right? So we located the luminance, and then um, we just did that. Uh, right, we just did that, and then dumped this entire thing. So I don't think there is a problem anywhere in here. I don't really think so, so let me take a look at the mat. Uh, row multiplied by stride, when we allocate stride is equal to width, so everything is correct in here, everything is correct. So th there must be something in dump mat, but what is it, what is it actually? Um, right, so we preallocated mat width and mat height. Aha! Uh -huh. But I mean, it doesn't really matter, it shouldn't really break in that specific case. Honestly. I didn't see an error. Grand max was much bigger than before refactoring, so long is probably wrong. Uh, okay, let, let me first check it myself. Okay, so people are starting backseat really hard. Uh, Alright, so let me see, let me see. Do I see any errors in here? Do I see any errors in here? I don't think so. It's just like everything. So except maybe this particular part, but I mean, it doesn't really matter. So it, and it definitely has to be width and height, that's for sure. So it definitely has to be width and height. Uh, so luminance. Um, oh. All right, so that's... That's fine. Damn. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's take a look at the luminance. Okay, gradient. Gradient is fine. Uh, DP. DP is fine. And the seam. The seam is fine. Okay, okay. So we refactored all of that without breaking anything hopefully at least in a visible manner um all right so what that means what that means honestly like do they even specify how exactly they're like what's the strategy of removing the sims do they just randomly pick the sim or do they um maybe they're just randomly picking it so maybe that's the that's the thing in here Maybe just randomly doing that. Mm, and honestly, also, mm, luminance. We need to keep stride uh, for the um, for the pixels as well. That's the problem. So I suppose one of the things we need to do is to also introduce a thing called an image, right? <laughs> so. I didn't want to do that, uh, but looks like we have to do that, honestly. Looks like we have to do that, otherwise it's going to be kind of difficult to, uh, to achieve all of that. So this is the pixels, and uh, here we're going to be having width and height and stride. Might as well, I think it makes sense to actually put it like this. Uh, there we go, and similarly, uh, to be fair, we can just use the same thing in here right so we can just use the same thing in here um so when yeah luminance we have to accept the image i suppose let's ah they're called pixels honestly right so they, they have different name in here so because of that i think let's call it image g right because it's also going to be three letter word so here we have image g and this is pixels. Yeah, boy. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, luminance image. Right. Uh-huh, so this is going to be imaging. 
Uh -huh. And so since we're iterating this entire thing, uh, I'm doing image at image y x e something like that, and we don't need that stuff anymore. Uh huh. Let me go. Let me see where we directly refer to pixels when we dump in this thing. Well, it's not that different, right? But we could pre-allocate an image uh, just to make it easier for us to do this kind of thing, but we don't really have to. Yeah, luminance, uh, and this is the original image, right? And in here we can just say pixels is pixels, uh, width is width, uh, height is height, and width is stride. So, and then we can just do imagery. Mm -hmm. Image to loom, loom to grad, grad to dp, and maybe, yeah, so um, maybe we literally could implement a function grad, um, you know, to dp or something like uh, accept the grad and just does dp, and we can move this entire thing there. Uh, right, so grad to dp. Uh, like so, so this is gonna be that, and it accepts the matrix grad, uh, grad and matrix dp. It also asserts that they have the same dimensions. Width dp, width, and also height, right? So grad to dp. So that simplifies the code a little bit. Honestly, we can put this stuff in here. Um, yeah, yeah. so we uh, loaded the image, we constructed it, then we pre-allocated some stuff. Um, right, so the committed uh, luminance, analyzed everything, dumped it. So we'll filter, analyzed, dumped it, gradient to be, analyzed, dumped. Um, all right, and this is where we start doing all of these things. So, um, yeah, so essentially we can now put that entire stuff into some sort of a loop, right? So as soon as you somehow, somehow removed one column from the image, somehow you removed one column from the image, you effectively uh, can uh, reduce the width, keeping the same stride, keeping the same stride, and you can repeat the entire process, and that does not reallocate the memory, except, uh, you know, for the situation when you do dump mat, but I suppose all of that can be, you know, disabled. Um, right, so analyze mean and max. I can move the analyze mean and max in here, so then there you can do analyze mean and max like so. So all of that stuff is easily disableable, all right, so dumping this entire thing and analyzing and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. Um, I, don't, I don't know. So the, the real question is, like, how do we pick original column? How exactly do we pick it? I think it's a very good question. Mm -mm. So maybe we could, we could pick it randomly. That's a very interesting idea, like rand. Um, image width, All right? So we do rand image width, and that picks a random column. And the first thing we want to do with this random column, we want to kind of, I guess, remove it right away. We want to remove it. Here is going to be output, by the way. Um, so the question is, how do you remove a particular column, All right? Um, you probably want to use mem move to do that. You probably want to use mem move. Um, so you just like move one part of the memory to another one over another one and like effectively re removing one pixel. And then you repeat that for each individual row. Right. You repeat that for each individual row as you climb upwards. And afterwards, by the way, afterwards you do width minus one. Uh, but furthermore, furthermore, you have to do that stuff for the rest of the matrices as well. Yeah, 
so that's kind of important. Uh, luminance, uh, then gradient, then dp. So, and then, since you're repeating this process, you're going to be recomputing the luminance sub filter and uh, grad to dp for each individual of them. I think random is mistake. Maybe it is. Uh, I don't freaking know, honestly. Mm, so, yeah. Uh, let's see, let's see. Um, the reason why you say that and the reason why you're being so sad about it is because you are afraid of making mistakes. And that's your first mistake, by the way. You're being afraid of making mistakes. Uh, right. So let me see. How are we going to be uh, doing this kind of shit? Look, imagine uh, A, B, C, D, E, F. Just fucking do it. Like, honestly. Who fucking cares like, if, if this is wrong? Right. So if this is wrong, we're going to instantly see that. So if we're going to be constantly afraid of being wrong and making mistakes and like how we will do anything. Right. So let's just fucking do something. And if it fails, it fails. We're going to fix that. So it will give us information about what's wrong. So I don't know. Just tell me. So like, don't be afraid of making mistakes. Um, school brain damage and ironically by the way and this is not to insult like seriously this is a school brain damage and this is not an insult i completely fucking understand you i have the same problem right i have the same problem i think our educational system like really damages our brain to the point that we're afraid to experiment right and i this is something that I also struggle myself, like, on a daily basis, basically. Those motherfuckers really, like, killed my desire to, like, explore. And I sometimes have to force myself to just, like, explore things. Do not be afraid of making mistakes. Afraid of being judged, exactly. That, that's a huge problem. Like, it's, it's a freaking huge problem. Uh, mm -mm. So, yeah. I think, like, uh, modern education literally damages our brain. Um, so, anyways. Um, so, what do we have in here? So, the destination... Uh, right, so if I want to remove the third element. Uh, so, obviously, for me... So, this is going to be the columns element. Um, so, the destination is obviously going to be the um, um a row right so we have some sort of a notion of a row um plus the column if if i just do this plus the column i'm going to be pointing at this thing and that's the destination so the source by the way is going to be basically the same thing it's basically the same thing but plus one right and here you have to be really careful because this api was developed by nsa like unironically so you have two pointers in here uh you have two pointers in here and all the pointer ar arithmetics is done in elements of the array right because here i have like i add column amount of elements i add one element but this motherfucker this motherfucker is not elements it's freaking bytes nsa motherfuckers intentionally did it like that so you make a mistake and you introduce a fucking buffer overflow it is, like mem move like whoever designed this I, I don't want to say that like i mean it's so fucking bad it legit feels like something introduced by nsa i swear to god like it's so easy to make a mistake and confuse elements with bytes in a single function call this is a freaking crime against humanity, I swear to God. Like, I cannot imagine how many vulnerabilities this kind of shit introduced. What the fuck? What the fuck? Anyways, so... <laughs> I'm being too dramatic today, I'm sorry. Uh, it's not that big of a deal, right? It's not a big deal. Just program in Rust. Just program in Rust. So, uh, like, how many elements we need to, to move in here, essentially, right? So, we have uh, six elements in here. Uh, and uh, if I just subtract three in here, right? So, subtract three in here. 
um, so which is the column, right? So which is the column, and I will have three, and it is not correct, uh, right? So it is definitely not correct. So it means I have to do minus one, additional minus one in here. So I suppose the the amount of elements is more like um, image width, image width, um, minus column, minus one, something like that. Minus column, minus one. Okay, so, and that specific row, actually, that specific row is more like image pixels, uh, right, and um, it's height minus one, right, so it's that specific row multiplied by, so it's an image, right, um, multiplied by, I'm pretty sure it would be easier to just do image at, then say, okay, take the last thing, mm -hmm. but the column is going to be zero, right? And they just take a pointer to this thing, right? Just take a pointer to this thing. So that's the row we're talking about. And because of that, maybe I can just do something like this right so it's going to be easier so this entire thing will expand to like um left hand side expression which i can take a point of um all right so it's more like a pixel row honestly because there's a little bit of confusion between row and column um, right pixel row mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's how we essentially remove all that. So I think maybe this thing should not be called colon. Maybe it should be called sim. I think that would make a little bit more sense because that's what it is. It's basically sim. Colon sim. Right. So that's the sim and it's sort of like a moving uh, like, like upwards or whatnot. It's moving upwards. Okay. Um, interestingly... What if I introduce y, which is originally something like this, but then later becomes something like this. And then I can say y. And then I can even repeat this thing several times. Right, first of all, I'm figuring out the sim, and then I'm taking the next thing and I just repeat this entire thing like so. All right, so we picked a random sim. We're starting with this thing. Um, maybe it is a mistake, but we're not afraid of making that mistake. Uh, we'll see if it is actually bad or not. Then we keep iterating until it's like negative or something like that. We figure out the next sim. We're removing that one from the current row, which is the current one. And then we're reducing this entire thing. And the question is like, how many times we want to do this entire stuff, right? How many times we want to do this entire stuff? So I suppose we can say that we want to do this entire thing, maybe, uh, let's say 100 times, like we're going to remove 100 of them. So, and afterwards, when we're printing all of that, we're going to say, I want to print width, height, pixels, and this time, this is going to be image stride, right? But in our case, stride is in pixels, but here we're going to convert it into the elements. Um, so we might as well just use u in such a to t. Oh boy. So let me go to noob.c, noob, noob. And I just want to rebuild this entire thing and see if it builds. It doesn't freaking build because what are we doing here? Um, yeah, so we factored this stuff out. Um, so we do grad. So they they have the same shape, so it doesn't really matter. So we can just do something like that. Um, yeah. So what else do we have? Stride. Aha. Uh -huh. So it has to be stride width. Can you even do that? I don't think so. Haha. Uh -huh. All right. Seems to be compound. <laughs> Fuck 
какво става. Но. Freaking no, man. And freaking no. So, um, it would be nice to maybe print uh, some stuff in here. Um, so, we disabled all of these things. So, we're not going to be printing shit, which is nice. Print uh, removing CMD. CMD. <laughs> and there we go. Um, mm, so, and we pick in the random one, but maybe that's a bad thing. So, maybe we have to always pick the smallest one. They were all, we kind of nailed it down. Uh, maybe we're going to start with just one single sim. Let's start with the one single sim. And start very, very slowly. Let's go. Mm -hmm. So we suppose, okay, so we've got the output. Can't really notice much, honestly. Can't really notice much. But at least it didn't break, which is nice, which I can appreciate, honestly. All right, well, how, how about 10? How about 10? Let's see, let's see. So 10 seems. All right, it's taking some time to, to save this entire stuff. And let's take a look at the output. It's not super bad uh let's take a look at the file size it's uh 100 um, 1418 what's the input what's the input uh fuck 28 28 18 it literally removed 10 columns out of this entire thing. So I wonder if we actually build with all the optimizations, it's going to be faster because I think that's one of the moments when it's worth it, right, to optimize everything in here. Um, so I think it is in fact worth it. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be 20 seconds actually, right? So while I'm streaming, on my old laptop, this kind of compilation is 20 seconds. And majority of the time is basically optimizing the STB libraries. That's better. So we definitely want to do that for the uh, for the 100, right? So if we're going to be carving out 100 of those things, we definitely want to have optimization for this entire stuff. So to be fair, yeah, whatever. It's like if we're compiling for one parameter, it's kind of, a, it's kind of an ass, right? Uh, so yeah, maybe we can pre-compile this to be libraries. That's that's true. That's true. That's true. So let's actually quickly do that. Um, in all fairness, we don't even have to compile them with all of the optimizations, right? I don't think it is necessary. Um, right. So what we need to optimize is the process of, you know, sim carving, right? The sim carving itself is more important, I think. Um, so let's do the following thing. I'm going to say X see so you have to kind of explicitly uh you know state that this is going to be c language right so this is going to be c uh, stb um what is uh stb image uh image dot h to be fair maybe i can do that manually once yeah let's just do that manually once just fuck that c o x c c O S T B O S T B image H and I also wanna do S T B image implementation. Implementation. Implementation, right? Implementation. So do we produce O? You know, fuck it. Let's uh, also optimize everything. <laughs> because why not? Uh, because why not? Why not? So it be that. That's literally the reason, as you can see. That's literally the reason. And uh, so STB image uh, right, uh, right image right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got this stuff nailed down. Uh, right. 
And now what I can do is to be image O is to be image right O and in main dot C in main dot C we do not include implementation. Right. Because we're linking implementation in here. Alright, so that's much better. So that was instantaneous actually. Implicit declaration is QTF, which is kind of weird, but uh, wait a second. All right, cool. Uh, but I want to get rid of the warning. I want to get rid of the warning. And the reason why we get a warning is because we need to include uh, math, quick math. Let's go. So yeah, that was faster. Thank you so much for, for the suggestion. So yeah, it's kind of unoptimized. Uh, but it's just like okay. I did whatever. Uh, okay, so let's open it. That is, you can already see artifacts, that's for sure. Uh, specifically here. W which is weird. Yeah, that is weird. Uh, we can continue even further. Alright, so let's do so a thousand is going to be too much let's actually do 300 right. castle got chopped yeah so that's what happened so we're probably gonna do the minimum version one right so i think it makes sense to do the minimum version one instead of the random the random is definitely not what we want Okay, so let's see. Yeah. So that's cool. And uh, it is a mistake, and it's fine. It is totally fine. It is fine to make mistakes. So we have width and height, and blah, blah, blah. So I hope I didn't do any fucky wacky specifically in here, right? I really. Fucking, f I even ranted about it and then forgot about it. Holy shit, that's how fucking bad this API is. You will make a mistake, even if you're like hyper aware of it, you will still make the fucking mistake. Oh my God. I swear to God. Anyways, I'm, I'm so sorry. I ranted about it so much, I freaking forgot about it. <laughs> uh, so, make PR to lipc, yeah, for sure. <laughs> One more time. Okay. Um, God damn, bro. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Let's make it even smaller. So there is a little bit of a distortion. I, I can see that. I can actually feel that. So we need to compare them side by side. So we're going to compare them side by side, actually. Uh, right, so 500 this is basically like third, I think. I think it's basically in the third. So it's going to be like very much visible. Um, so yeah. The tower is a bit wobbly. Yeah, it is. I'm not really sure why. So this is because we're picking them randomly, but I don't know. Like the animation that I showed in the Discord, it felt like they were picking randomly. But I mean, who freaking knows? Maybe maybe the, the strategy was actually. Damn. That's kind of funny, honestly. What the fuck is this at the bottom? I mean.
Well, it's already something. Yeah, so it, it kind of lost this this part. Uh, in the Wikipedia, uh, when they... Nah, in the Wikipedia is actually fine. It's actually fine. Huh. It's actually preserved it really well. Okay, so let's let's try the minimal energy strategy. Uh, right, instead of random one. So we're gonna start with the zero, uh, and here we're gonna do int x. Right, so it's gonna be from one x to width plus plus x. Oof, 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 oof. This is a mistake. This is a huge mistake, actually. You know what? You know what? I think um, I'm gonna put like underscores in here. You're not supposed to use them directly, honestly. So let's go to the conventions. Uh, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. mm, yep, that's good. So these are legit cases. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Those are also legit cases, but to be fair, let's use them through imagery. Uh, right, so let's tie them to imagery for now. Um, but maybe not actually, because they're not, they, they will stay kind of the same. So I would say these are also legit cases of using this thing. Um, Let's do the random, picking the random image width, right, so it's that one, um, yeah, uh, that's, that's a huge mistake, though height is not modified, so that's kind of fine, uh, but still, and this is a huge mistake, because it's decreasing, so we have to take that into account, okay, so random strategy with a fixed bug with a fixed bug um, because I think it's a significant bug because the width uh, is the, the full width right so you're not supposed to use those temporary values that we used to during the loading maybe I should maybe I should just like load them directly into into image right and just like get rid of them and just like use width and height directly like pointers to here and stuff that sounds like a good idea honestly so all right so let me see nah it still warps them it kind of still warps them um can this par be parallel i don't think so because each image depends on the previous one so um okay so let's try the you know the lowest energy idea and the x starting from one x less than image width the current image width plus plus x and what do we have in here if um so how do we do that if dpx uh, is less than sim sim is the new thing now that's it basically all right so we're picking the the one with the lowest energy all the time do we I think we do. Yeah, I think we do. All right, very cool. Uh, what else do we? What the fuck do we have in here? So this is. Oh, okay. So this is a good opportunity to actually do something like this. Honestly, right. Right. I think it became a little bit slower. Mm, yeah, it's like extra iteration for for a row. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it, it makes sense to actually always try to uh, pick the lowest energy, and overall it will distort it less. So in the video there is even justification of like how the energy sort of like reduces over time or increases over time. All right, so we got rid of the person. <laughs> Which is kind of funny, but I mean it. It preserved the. Yeah, this is actually really funny. 
Yeah. Okay, so it depends also like what kind of function you're using, right? So depending on the function, you also get different results. So let's try the 300 in here. It was a low energy person. Yeah, it was the person was really tired. <laughs> so with the low energy. This person was just part of the statistics. Yeah, just a fluke. The KHB algorithm. By the way, this algorithm can be used to actually remove pretty complex objects out of this scene without AI again, without data-driven approaches. Let's put it this way, right? Because AI doesn't really mean anything. Without data-driven approaches, uh, right? Completely unsupervised. It's kind of bizarre. Like, where is the person? So yeah, we, we get rid of the person. Mm, so the most energy artifacts. Um, but I mean, I can start with the most energy seam, right? But the DP is actually computed to minimize the energy. So, right, but that means I'll have to change the DP. Mm, the person is behind you. Mm -mm. <laughs> the person did not deserve this algorithm. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. I love it. Uh... <laughs> but I mean, it kind of worked. It kind of... But why did it get rid of the person? That's so bizarre. Honestly, so bizarre. Um, so Papper Dolan, yeah, Papper Dolan. Um, so what's the strategy, honestly, for the for the algorithm? So okay, we computed all of these things, and then uh, right, find finding the sim. So maybe we can listen to what they say. All right. Um. using cropping or warping we are using seam carving we're taking out seams from the images and um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the seams and I'm going to uh, go back to the energy function a little bit later in my talk um, of course we're not the first one to use seams either uh, seams have, of course how do we find inner seam inside the image so the big question is, of course, how do we find those seams? How do we know which seam to remove in order to change the size of the image? Well, um, the idea is, as I said, to find some energy function that will guide us to find the best seam inside the image. So the optimal seam would be the seam that will incorporate the least amount of energy inside the image. Um, yes, in this example, the energy is just the magnitude of the gradient. So what we are looking for, in fact, is a seam that will contain the least amount of uh, energy in terms of sum of aver or average. Um, it's the same thing in this example. Um, and we are removing exactly that seam. Well, how do we actually find that seam? It seems like this would be um, an exponential problem because there's exponential. Mm, yeah, it's explaining but in fact, basic this things. Can be solved easily um, by dynamic programming. What we do is yeah, we already know that. an accumulative cost matrix where each pixel looks at the uh, uh, top three neighbors and tries to create the column seams. Um, uh, cost matrices, then we can find the least, uh, the smallest seam by just following through using dynamic programming. So this is the vertical seam, and here's the horizontal seam. Um, so very simple algorithm can find us and can help us find those uh, vertical or, or horizontal seams. Okay, but what's the strategy of picking the seams? So, as you've seen, uh, we've used this type of method to create aspect ratio correction. So, this is the original image, this is the seam Both dimensions. Just realize that they never... Going back to the... They never really got into the strategy, I just realized that. Energy preservation, 
so they're talking about the energy preservation but i think they don't really go into the strategy of picking the sims i don't think so right it's just like whatever whatever works uh their energy function is different maybe yeah that's that's my hypothesis so they use a different energy function uh so in our energy function is actually kind of dumb honestly um so when doing dp when index out of bounds use zero in minimum use instead of you think that's the problem let's take a look at the dp grad to dp so let me see um, so when doing dp when index out of bounds use you use zero in minimum use in like you your sentence doesn't make sense to me uh, right so this is the mm -mm. so maybe so if we out of bounds so when we're picking the thing we just like ignore that and i feel like like grant to dp like we already use zero in here right so if we're out of bounds uh, we literally use zero. So that's that's literally what we're doing here. That's literally what we're doing. Um, that's a bizarre problem. Don't really know how to troubleshoot that. So, but it is what it is, and it isn't what it isn't. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm gonna assume that they just have a different energy function, right? So, but I mean, they say. So they use this, we use the Sobel operator, but Sobel operator is not necessarily like what is the gradient. He wants you to use a float max instead of zero. Um, what? Ah, oh my God, I see. You use zero in minimum use um grad dp mm -hmm. is that what why what i doing here Isn't that what I do in here? So if we so float float max in here, that's what you mean. Jesus, is that's what you mean? Why do we do that? Let, let me let me think. Um, oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. So because I'm as I already said, I'm really sleepy right now. Right. So it's. Um, my brain doesn't really work that well it's actually a miracle that i managed to code something at all <laughs> honestly <laughs> right i see i see okay man i'm really happy that i recently discovered the technique to put chat into the video so now my struggling doesn't look awkward for youtube people right youtube people can literally just uh, enable the captions and see the conversation, right? At the same time, I don't have to include the chat into the video and make the video super annoying. Uh, right, so uh, that's actually super cool. Uh, okay. It, it made it worse. So, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, like, didn't I fuck up something in some other places? Um, so, didn't think so uh wow it just works yeah uh so essentially l let me just think about it for a moment let me just think about it so when we are picking the minimum energy it, it has to be f uh, flt max that's for sure it has to be flt max uh originally flt max so uh -huh, uh -huh. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. 
that makes a lot of sense but why it didn't work um, so I also remember that I made some changes in here uh, so what if we try a random shit again um, um, so maybe I can do something like this if zero um, sim rand uh, image width uh, it's kind of bizarre why it didn't work. I really like how it's faster. Um, uh, you, you guys are not uh, telling me. So change the comparison to mean energy. Like where is in the code? What's the line? Like it, it's cool that you found something, but tell me the line. Uh, right, so I don't remember, right, so, mm, like, it's just, like, trying to search the needle in a haystack. Um, so, it, that didn't help, I suppose. Oh, by the way, I should have actually done that. You're using greater instead of less when searched for sim. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, tr that's true. So that's what I did. Okay, so thank you. Um, so we know that the stuff somewhere in the P. You know that. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully this one is gonna be the winner this time. Hopefully. It's just like, holy shit, we got it. Thank you, everyone. Holy fuck. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, it still worked a little bit, but I mean, it's just like much better than it was before. Uh, okay, first try, by the way. First try, first try, first try, first try. Um, okay, so let's maybe try to like do... 800 like really really make it small and i'm gonna try something super super cool so do you remember the content aware memes with faces and shit like that so the problem the limitation of this algorithm is that it works really bad with faces you know why because it considers the features of the faces like eyes nose and mouth um the separate objects, right? Different parts of the face have higher energies than the rest of the face. And because of that, it distorts the faces in a really fucking funny way. Uh, so the thing I want to do now, I want to try to apply it on faces, uh, right? And see how it, how it goes. Damn, that's sexy. Holy shit. The person is in the frame. The building is in the frame. What the fuck? <laughs> Again, <laughs> this shit is not data driven. There is no neural network that was trained on millions of images. It's just a dumb algorithm. That's what's cool about it. It's just like, oh, it has limitations, but there is no AI in a modern sense of AI. It's not data driven. It's completely unsupervised. It's just like, yeah, it just does the thing. Um, so fucking cool. Okay, so let's actually find some faces. Um, so ethically, uh, uh, where's the ethically sourced Lena? Ethically sourced Lena. It's amazing. It's, it's so fucking cool. Uh, right, so let's grab this thing. Uh, <laughs> right, so let's grab this lemon. Uh, and do the little get. And let's just download that. Uh huh. Lena. Uh huh. So, <laughs> uh, that's what it was looking for uh, the culmination of today's stream uh, so let's actually re don't remove 
uh, like this many, 250. Let's let's remove this amount of things. Um, okay, let's go. Okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this algorithm doesn't really work on faces, but I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's much better now. <laughs> Holy fuck! Okay, so what if I remove even even further? Um, how about like three hundred and fifty? Uh, let's go. Um, all right. <laughs> oh, this is so fucking beautiful, I love it. Uh, new profile pic. New profile pic. So yeah, so as you can see, it was just like eyes and the mouth. Like you can clearly see that the mouth has higher energy than the space between the eyes. So it was encouraged to reduce the space between the eyes, but not the mouth, right? Because there's a lot of like details in there, right? So there's a lot of energy. Uh, so it doesn't really work on faces, um, but yeah, it's pretty cool algorithm. It's pretty cool algorithm. All right, I guess that's it for today. Thanks everyone who's watching me right now. I really appreciate that. Have a good one, and I see you all on the next recreation programming session with Mr. Azulin. I love you. Mwah.